So here are my trade station charts with the current front month for the e mini S&P, H23 is March 2023, and the current front month for the NQ futures, H23 is also March of 2023. Now we are on the verge here, it's Sunday, March 12th, 2023, and so tomorrow is the roll date as per the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. So currently you can find this information at the CME Group website, and you can see under equity index roll dates, for the year 2023 contract and the month March contract, the roll date is going to be the 13th. So again, that's tomorrow. So what I need to do is prepare my charts so that if I'm day trading tomorrow, I'm going to trade the next contract, which is June of 2023. So that symbol is going to be M for the contract month June. And in order to be prepared to trade that contract, I need to prepare my charts and kind of roll them over. So here is my process that I use. And it starts with me using the weekly time frame and moving down. So what I first do is make a new trade station workspace. I'm going to put it right next to the weekly workspace for the existing contract. And then I'm going to copy. So control shift C on a PC and then control shift V into the new workspace, the March contract. I'm going to make another copy control shift V of that chart and move it over to the right. But on this one, I'm going to change it to the June contract. Now you can delete the annotations if you feel like that's messing with your you know, computer's memory and things like that. So since this is the weekly chart and I don't have too many annotations, I'm just highlighting them and hitting delete on the keyboard to move them out of the way. Okay. But what's important is that I want the left side to be the old contract and I want the new side to be the new contract. So this new contract is again ES M23. And when I hit enter, you're going to see it looks very similar to the first contract, the old one in terms of the way the market moved, but these are not going to be the exact same price levels, nor are they going to be um, the exact same momentum readings for the RSI power zones. So if I want to kind of retain some valuable information that may be on the first chart and bring it over to the chart on the right, here's the method I do. By doing it this way, you kind of don't lose track of your analysis. So first I'm going to look back at some of these longer term forecasts I had. I don't really feel like I particularly need them on the new chart. It's kind of okay for me to not have that. So the first one I'm going to delete and I don't need to recreate on the next chart. Okay. Now the second one was pretty useful that anchored off the August 19th high. So what I'm going to do is come in here. I'm going to edit trend line, go to style and hit set as default. That way I know I'm capturing that exact line style. And I see that was June 17, 2022. So I'm going to come here and find the June contract version of the same low, June 17, 2022. So now I'm connecting those lines so that I can see, hey, I want to recreate this forecast to be able to reflect back on it. So in doing that, I've now eliminated the need for this on the old chart. So you see, as you transpose items to your new contract chart, if you delete them off the old chart and you do the side by side, you won't get confused about where you are in your full transposing analysis. Okay. All right. Now from there, this forecast to me is not something I want to carry over. Uh, this forecast is not something I want to carry over. I do want to carry over these analysis of uh, bar ranges. So I'm going to open up this Fibro tracement lines tool. And again, if I want to capture the exact same line color, thickness, settings, I'm going to hit set as default. That way I know it's sort of like on my cursor here. Then I'll go and in the window of the chart I want to annotate on, I'll get a new fresh fib retracement. And again, this is all on a weekly chart. I'm going to go create the same one. So it was on the bar for the week ending February, 20, February 3rd. And so now I'm going to do it for the week ending February 3rd here. So you can see it's giving me the same type of analysis, but the values are going to be different. That's expected when you are moving to new contract. Now, if I want this tool here, the pink one, I can do the same thing. Now I can go ahead, hit edit. I can open it up, set that as default, see what week that was. It was the week ending December 23rd, go to the new contract, grab the Fibonacci retracement tool and go to the week ending December 23rd. 
Notice, the more you do this, the less you're going to even have to even check the specific date because you're going to be following the rhythm of the market and you're going to see that the times are not different. It's the price levels and the RSI power zones readings that can be different, okay? So now I've recreated those two. And lo and behold, my old weekly chart is now empty. This means I've captured everything. And before I proceed, I wanna go ahead and save this. So I'm going to go and save this so that it says ESM23 weekly. So for that, what we're gonna do is file, workspace, save workspace as, go to wherever you keep your main TradeStation workspaces backed up if you're doing this on TradeStation, and then type in the name you want, ESM23, so this is gonna be the first one, weekly. Now that I've done that, I can go ahead and close out the March window. I don't need to delete it. I can save it for any uh, restudy. But once I close that workspace, I can also now close the old March chart. And now I am resulting uh, left with the June chart for the weekly. Now it's up to me. If I want to get these annotations to show up on the daily chart, I can copy this and continue the process for the daily, or I can um, start the daily analysis fresh. So at this juncture, I'm gonna continue on. I'm gonna continue on with my entire contract role process and keep this in the portal for my Skinning the Markets members. Hope this was helpful to you to see how you can use the old chart you have analyzed to make a new chart. It's very clean and simple and um, easier to keep track of your annotations this way. And I'll catch you soon.